first, you know, let everybody know what happened with Gino, and then I think move into, like, telling some really good Gino stories. Yeah. It's hard to talk about for me. Yeah, I don't even... Stories, stories, stories. I think we just kind of start with talking about the, that he's passed away and, you know, that he was excited about this, and then <coughs> move into some, you know, some good, really good stories. Um, anything that you can tell without getting yourself in trouble. <laughs> yeah. um, or, you know, make That'll all the trouble funny. on him. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Gina was a really bad influence. <laughs> 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 um, okay. So, yeah, this, the, this Nostalgia Fest has been in the making. We've been uh, planning this for months. And uh, unfortunately, in that time, our guitar player Gino passed away semi mysteriously and suddenly, and uh, we still don't n know really know what everything about it. But um, so it seemed like the show was off once again. Um, but uh, we decided we're, we are going to play as a tribute to Gino with Ralph from Victims Family. So that's our plan. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm just learning now that it sounds like Gino was a big force in actually getting us to the point of even playing at all. So yeah, yeah. Um, it seems unfathomable yeah. that we would even play again. So I think yeah. you know even yeah. when this came up, it's like well how, that's not going to happen because it's been too long. You know the singer lives in Texas, but one miracle after another kept <laughs> lining up, and that yes, it is going to happen. And then it almost happened last year, and then no, it wasn't happening. And then it's going to be with Moda Stillbirth. And uh, anyway, where we are now is playing it with Ralph. Um, yeah, Craig's coming out from Texas. Uh, we still have not <laughs> ever played. <laughs> yeah, <together. laughs> we you know, and as as exciting as this is, you know, and I'm so glad we get to play for Gino and get to even play together again. It it definitely won't be the same. No, it, you know, it was going to be a real victory, just the fact that the four of us were going to be in the f same room for the first time since summer of 84, because we have not, we've all seen each other, but not all together, and so yeah. just that alone was going to be a huge, uh, you know, triumph for us, and yeah. uh, it's, it's hard to imagine not playing with Gina, but I, I'm glad we get to play still. So, uh, yeah, well, I hope it and and it should be said, uh, Ralph, of course, you know, we, we played with Idiot Savants. We knew Ralph at the time. He was a inspiration to us. He was one of the, you know, really the, the scene elders even at that point. I mean, that's yeah. absolutely how I regarded the, uh, the, the, the students at the junior high, at the junior college, w which was the adjoining campus to the high school that I was going to. I, I was spending as much time as possible, as little at, at school and as much time over there getting to know the older kids that, be, that were uh, the Tearaways and Idiot Savants and Urban Accessories. And, uh, and Ralph, we found out later, like long after we had been playing together, that he had secretly wished he was in the Skirt Boys or wanted to be, and we really wanted him to be in the band, but neither, you know, yeah. neither one asked the other. And uh, so it's a perfect fit, you know, that now he would take the place. I mean, at least he's a absolutely appropriate, the, the best uh, fill-in for Gina, because they also were roommates. You know, Gino and I lived together during Skirt Boys in two different places, but also later during Stone Juju and uh, <coughs> Victim's Family, but in between that, Gino lived with Devin and Ralph during the, the formation of Victim's Family, so they were very close. You know, Gino went on the early VF tours, and he's been on the road with us a few times. We we always visit him in LA. Gino's been going back and forth from LA ever since. He actually finished high school in LA. So right. he's just been going back and forth. Luckily, I, I'm really grateful that I got to see him. He came to the Jello's last show in LA at the Roxy. And <coughs> that's the last time I got to see him. But I'm, just, I'm glad I had that. Yeah. This is that first show that Gino took me to. Fear and Red Cross and uh, 
he got, and Flea was the bass player of Fear at the time. And on the way, I don't know if you guys read the story I posted. We were approaching the club, and another friend of ours, Ace, who was also from LA, they Gino and Ace recognized Lee Ving and Fear uh, and Flea in the doorway of this uh, adult bookstore video arcade. And just said, hey, we're from L.A. too, you know, can we uh, help you load some gear in? And, and surprisingly, they're like, sure. So we, like, went to their van and, like, loaded Fear's gear into the On Broadway. And that was the first time I entered the place. And uh, Tales of Terror and Red, Red Cross. And I was a huge Red Cross fan from this moment on as well. There's there's some crazy Gino stories. I don't even know if she should be <laughs> out there. But, but, man, he was involved in some extremely heavy stuff, like... Like, as soon as he moved back to L.A., th th it was such a crazy time, man. This is, well, like... I don't know these stories. Really? Well, yeah, yeah. Gino yeah. was, um, <clears throat> this is one of the best Gino stories. I, <laughs> I'm almost, like, not sure I should bring it up, but but it's, it's basically, it's out there. Uh, <laughs> you guys clean the story. <laughs> um, he, he, was a, he was arrested. Him and his friends stole... I from a policeman and traded them to the Mexican Mafia for ice cream and managed to <laughs> <laughs> no story you can't make this up you can't make this up no you can't and he miraculously had some like high ranking military relative who we barely knew who got him off the hook I mean he was also does he should have been put away for life basically for that right I mean Maybe one of the saving factors was that he was a minor still. He probably was still 17, but right, right. still, like, some, like, you know, U.S. Marshal in the family had to plead for his freedom. So that was the first time Gino really, he was amazingly lucky and unlucky. He, he got into some real gnarly shit and somehow managed to escape, you know, time after time. Um, and same with the, the singer. So that happened, something similar to the singer, and he, it was a life-changing event for him. And, you know, um, he really spent, uh, I think, 20 years in the military, or 25 years, yeah. ever, basically from that soldier. Grateful Dead concert yeah. on. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Went then, from uh, Grateful Dead to professional Yeah, to a, to a career military guy. Yeah. And... Which is especially this should be mentioned too because this this was what I thought was going to be the most incredible and powerful aspect of the Skirpoys reunion was that you know our our lyrics are extremely anti-war extremely anarchistic and and here's like this guy has been he did six tours of Iraq you know he's been on battlefields he's and the yeah. lyrics were already from the perspective of a soldier on a battlefield There's a song and now he has that way, this yeah. so yeah. you know. That's that's been his reality. So that's and he loves the incredible. song. I mean, I'm talking yeah, to him. He loves him. Yeah, he's very yeah. He's excited to be doing this again. So that still is a very powerful and exciting aspect of this reading for me. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Me too. It's amazing. <sighs> so how did it end? Ah, good question. That's a, good that's question. a really good question. Yeah. So it ended like kind of as spontaneously as it started. Well, it was. My my take on it is that we kind of went four different directions, at, kind of spontaneously, um, but spurred by some events. Uh, Gino lost his father for one thing. That was, yeah. and he moved back to L.A. I guess because he'd already lost his mother, so he I think he like finished high school living with his grandmother in L.A. So that was one thing, like really unexpectedly, right. his father. Right who was like kind of a movie producer guy, kind of swinger partier dude, <laughs> like just t totally unexpectedly died. And then uh, Gino moved back. Craig got arrested. He and I were at a Grateful Dead concert and uh, he, he got taken away and uh, <laughs> was really close to having, well, it, it was a life-changing moment for him. Yeah. Um, but it could have been a lot worse. He he had to like basically clean up his act and uh, you know audition for his freedom basically you know and he, and he was successful. He you know was uh, I don't even know how he did it, but you know he really should have 
been put away for a long time. <laughs> and then Jonathan, I think you just wanted to distance yourself from the. the yeah. The well, the, the interesting. This is not going to be great for promotion, but I was never like a punk rock <laughs> head. I just was into these guys and playing music with them, but I wasn't like following the bands and stuff like that. And through like experiences, I got into things like meditation and yoga and not doing drugs and and so there was just a natural kind of like dis you know distancing but that all happened at so, the same yeah, time it, that it really did it's, so, it's yeah. all and it's also boom. the same time ralph knocked on my door and said let's start a band so so the way i always told it was like the drummer went new age the, <laughs> the singer joined the military and the guitar player went glam <laughs> basically that's what happened you know, like gino got into like you know that's when guns and roses came on the scene and like really he went Pretty much direction. to the 180 from everything that we had been, you know, doing. He, like, took a left turn and went that way. And, and you know, we were still really close friends and all that throughout all that. But uh, but he he went another direction. And so it was really kind of like, really simultaneously four different directions. And and never discussed again, basically. So yeah. that's... Yeah. So there wasn't for the even really a breakup. <laughs> What? Was there really even a breakup, or was it just like... No, not, there was a... Not really. I, 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 well, maybe you don't know the story, but I had I had drummed up the courage to tell these guys that I, I, I don't think I can be in the band anymore, and I come over to your guys' house, and Gino goes, I got bad news, man. I'm moving back to L.A. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And then I was like, oh, I didn't have to... <laughs> right, so Gino and I were living... We didn't bring this Not up. Really we started at, yeah, yeah, we were living at 7th and Wilson, above the soup kitchen, squatting this gnarly apartment. Like, we didn't even pay rent on it for, like, <laughs> the last seven months, and we finally had gotten evicted, too. So that was coming down on us, too. There was, like, sheriff's papers nailed to our door. You guys get the hell out. Pay or quit, basically. Gino's dad, Craig's arrest. Him, like, <laughs> just, okay, boom, no more band. And then Victim's Family started, and... and uh, Really, yeah, there's yeah. just almost been no reflection ever since on on that period. Not really. Yeah. All right. Yes. Anything well, else thanks. that you guys want to talk about, or um, I think we're yeah, we've kind of just that I'm really stoked to be playing Nostalgia Fest and uh, love Schlong. Yeah. They're like one of my all-time favorite bands. I'm so stoked! I couldn't believe when I heard they were on the bill <laughs> and Sean Powered with Tom Gaffey. and uh, who all's on this bill? Like, hey, let's, should we have this? Yeah. One? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Do you want a big one? Maybe. Um, yeah, that's right. S slow gurkha. Yeah, just uh, excited about this, you guys. Thanks for having us, and thanks for letting us reminisce about our old days. But yeah, Absolutely. Dr. Frank, too. <laughs>